So what should have been a ride with Jason Bull is going to be Jason riding his bike and us kind of talking about it. But this episode is going to be serving two purposes. One, to give you a bit more context and a bit more background stories to who Jason is. Because those of you that have been following the Wild Day TV and the All Ride journey for some time would have seen Jason, of course, presenting on the show. But he also happens to be an absolute pinner on a bike. So welcome to the next episode of A Ride With Jason Bull. You. So J-Dog, 2019, it's been a big year. We've welcomed you to the Wild Air TV and the All Ride family, mm -hmm. but uh, you've also had an outstanding year on a mountain bike. What have been your highlights so far? Oh, no, definitely been a wild one. Had some incredible experiences traveling and riding bikes, uh, namely Lesotho, the first big one in March, and then heading over to Europe with my dad. To go and, the plan was just to go and ride some bikes in, in Europe and then ended up entering a few EWS events um, by as, a stroke as, of luck. As you do. As yeah. you do. Yeah. Um, Dad stayed away from the EWS events, <laughs> but he was there for support and it was, it was such a good time. Incredible stuff. So, I mean, I mean it's, it's arguably your first real year of, of taking riding a bit more seriously in many yeah. respects, um, but it didn't start there. I mean, you've built up over time, no doubt. So, take us, take us back to the beginning. Where did your love for riding and in, actually, where did your love for adventure sports start? Because you, you also ride with a kayak and enjoy trail running and a bunch of other mm. stuff. Oh, so back when I was a lighty, it, it seems I did enjoy the occasional huck to flat, building some jumps in the garden. My dad was riding bikes and I wanted to be like dad. So so um, your dad was a, was a guy that loved a huck to flat as well? Yeah, big, big huck to flat for Vince. <laughs> 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 no, <geez. laughs> but yeah, I don't know where the excitement for, for airtime and the more adrenaline things came from. Maybe a lack of fear. Um, but yeah, just a progression from being a kid, doing the sports my dad was doing, like canoeing, mountain biking. Just enjoying them, loving being out and spending time with him, spending time with friends. Yeah, that was it, I'd say. Yeah, man. So, I mean, we're here to talk about mountain biking, but we're also going to give people a bit of a broader context there too, because as you say, your dad was a paddler and still enjoys putting a paddle in the water now yeah, and again, yeah. but you certainly do as well. And you've gravitated more towards the white water side of things. I mean, you've, you've paddled K1s and K2s, but white water really seems to get you mm, going. Much to my mom's dismay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. I really enjoyed doing multiple sports, um, especially when they when they feed into each other a bit, and you you learn you can learn new things from different sports that that help that help each other. Um, so yeah, whitewater kayaking mainly. I've started enjoying trail running quite a bit recently, especially being in here in Cape Town. It's it's full of full of good trail to to run, and then yeah, the mountain biking. Where did it kick off? High school? Yeah, high school was quite a quite a significant time. I, I was, had been a bit timid before, although enjoying a hike to flat every now and then. But there I started to really push myself, riding more technical trails, nothing serious, but just getting adventurous, um, having friends around that were like-minded and we pushed each other, um, becoming more confident in white water. Yeah. So what would you say your highlight of your white water paddling career has been? Oh, I did a, a trip up to the white now um, at the beginning of last year. Um, and there are ridiculously large rapids there. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, to go and experience it, it's being dammed up now at the moment. Sadly, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that massive big water, feeling the power of the water, you're really at the mercy of it. And learning, finding the flow there, I suppose, similar to mountain biking. That was, that was a big highlight for me. And in terms of what's on offer down here in the Western Cape, narrow, steeper, colder type yeah, of kayaking? Very much colder. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, awesome, steep, creek-style rivers. Um, yeah, I often get a message at 4 p.m. saying, uh, see you at the put-in, sunrise tomorrow. <laughs> and then we jet off usually to the Baines Kloof or Detroit's Kloof uh, and get involved there, wearing lots of warm gear. But yeah, steep rivers, incredible whitewater, yeah. strong community as well. And I mean, a bit more context on, on whitewater kayaking there before we move over to riding only. Um, it's a pretty full-on sport. It's committing, mm. especially at that level. I mean, the rivers you're talking about now down here in the Cape, in particular the White Nile, they're class five white water. There's, Indeed, there's yeah. real consequence attached to those types of things. So do you find that that understanding that level of risk and understanding how crucial it is to be making lines has played a part in helping you as a rider? Yeah, sure. I really enjoy the the focus that is needed in those in those moments when there's a must-make line on a rapid and there, there are serious consequences if you're not going to get it right. Um, I find that helps me to get into the zone a bit. And as you said, it feeds across into mountain biking, like knowing how to pick a line and commit to it, particularly when you're at speed on a bike, um, has served me really well. Um, 
when I'm riding for fun and now in racing this year. So your first bike. Now we move over to the riding side. <laughs> your first bike. Talk us talk us through it. Absolute shred sled. <laughs> <laughs> the Trek 4 300 series. It's about this big. Still got it in my garage. Um, use it for jibs now. Nice. But yeah, hardtail. Nothing special. Got a few upgrades after it fell off the back of our car. Um, but yeah, just a standard bike that I used to learn skills on. Doing little wheelies, bunny hops. I enjoyed riding flats as a kid to try and learn how to move the bike. Um, yeah, with without being clipped into it. And yeah, I liked, I enjoyed a, a technical hiking trail or two, slow speed stuff, trial style. I'm no Danny McCaskill, but <laughs> that's the inspiration. For sure. Well, you can see some of it translating into the, the type of riding that you're doing now, so to speak. But before we get there, would you say that, you know, in terms of a, a normal riding progression that people, when they start riding, should actually start out on hardtails because it teaches you how to ride a bike, it teaches you how to feel terrain. Mm. Um, do you think that that's, uh, accurate i think that's for sure like the less the bike's going to look after you the more you're going to have to learn how to ride properly and apply the skills i definitely i back flat pedals as skills learning i mean i race in clips most of the time if i'm not <laughs> well, <laughs> wearing less legit <laughs> riding um we, we'll get to the yeah but yeah definitely having a bike that's not going to look after you as much you, you learn better skills on it that's for sure yeah and i'd probably i would say that starting out to, with that mindset as a younger rider would be easier then people like for someone that's 35, like starting out on a hardtail, that's Indeed. not really going to look after you too much. Probably not the way to go, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean everything, everything within reason. Um, but talking more to to the skill side of things, it's it's clearly evident that you've got a very high skill set. Is that something that you've worked on? I know you've spent a lot of time at at Chris Nixon's bike park, for example, down here in the Western Cape. But it, it's got to have come from somewhere. Uh, talk us through your progression from a skills perspective. Yeah. I think I've always had a natural knack for these things. I've learned quickly and picked up on things that others may not have. Um, definitely not the best. There's still so much to learn and um, and grow in. But it has just been a natural progression. I've, I've enjoyed these sports. I've, when all the other kids stopped riding bikes around town, I suppose I just didn't stop. I kept on riding. And, and yeah, I suppose that's it. Just lots of practice hours on the bike. But it's been enjoyable. It's never been an achievement-based thing for me. It's about you know, learning how to use my body and and ex explore and experience yeah. for sure and i mean a place like nixon's even yeah, someone indeed. like yourself where you you've obviously got as i've said a fantastic skill set you still spend time there you still work on it i mean it's a great place to learn yeah no there's there's great potential there like you can always work on your cornering like there's, that's something i've learned is never never perfect there's always more to work on there you, just, you can get creative in the park and find some big jumps to to huck the guys in the workshop have been incredible with helping me learn about how to look after my bike which it's a lot of work there's been a lot of I usually just go into true my wheels. It's basically a weekly thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, the whole bike shop setup there has been so helpful for me as a rider. Definitely, for sure. So now moving to to your varsity days. Uh, there you've you've seemed to have kept it pretty well balanced. Uh, as I said, up until this year, it's getting a bit more focused. But yeah. you've you in winter, the water's there, you paddle. If the water's not there, you ride. Yeah. Um, but talk us about UCT, because that's the first time that I actually saw Jason in action. Uh, someone sent me a clip of this lunatic riding around. It was a Rocky Mountain, right? Yeah, yeah. Rocky altitude. A little altitude there, and he was literally hacking stair sets and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I was like, why doesn't this guy ride bikes more? He should really race. <laughs> and then literally a few months later, there, there he is. So how did you develop the fondness for riding that stuff in UCT? Because it's, it's gnarly, man. It is. Yeah. I mean... Coming into university, first year out of high school, I got my first enduro bike, which was that Rocky Mountain. Um, and now that there was a bit more bikes to look after me, I suppose I got a little bit more adventurous in that. And yeah, I've enjoyed, Fabio Wibmer was actually a big inspiration. Watching his his um, urban riding, I figured like the campuses we've got it there, there's so many uh, sets of stairs to ride and cool lines that I see when I'm walking to lectures every day. Um, so I just went up on the weekend and yeah, I tried to, do some bigger jumps, definitely scared myself a lot, broke some derailers and <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoyed no, that. No broken riding. bones. No broken bones. Luckily, which, which I'm surprised. Wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next year, can you just can you just hold I'm this? Just gonna, yeah, yeah. Hang on to that. Yeah. Can you just hold this for the rest of the yeah, yeah you good. need to keep that now. You've set yourself up there. <laughs> but I mean, going to UCT, they've got a fantastic cycling club set up there. Right? I mean, yeah. there's like a really good vibe. I mean, they've got that that XE track mm. above campus too, above the tennis club. I mean, there looks to be a lot of a lot of good stuff coming out of UCT, particularly around mountain biking. No, it is. It's good stuff. I enjoy a few laps on the XE track every now and then. I mean, if you can, as my mate Luke Dinkle said, if you can suffer for 10 minutes on XE track, you'll do well in an enduro stage. For sure. Um, yeah, they might even convince me to ride a road bike soon. <laughs> 
but it'll stick to trails for now. <laughs> it's okay. I won't leave you. <laughs> Next thing you know, you'll be riding with Ray Cox on those guys at uh, Kelani doing laps, racing Ooh, every it's Wednesday. Max Sullivan, right? the boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just yeah, going to yeah. have to grow a mustache now. Baby steps, baby steps. Baby steps. It's a bit, of a, leap, bit of a leap. I can't grow Joking, a guys, we love you. We love you. Um, because Max can rip on a flipping enduro bike. No, so you got to, he's got no problem getting down no, the trail, that's no. for sure. I think he was top 10 at SA Enduro Champs. But yeah, let's, let's going back to back to the gravity side of things. So 2019, as you've said, a breakout year for you in many respects. Um, what is it like racing in Lesotho? Because everything I've seen come out of that, it was a lot of jank, but really raw terrain where you, you're kind of seeing stuff for the first time and you're just having to deal with it. You, mm. you kind of... I know I'm hurrying things along a little bit here, but at the end of the day one, you were kind of just outside of top five, right? And then yeah. you moved through the field on, on day two. But an overview, talk us through Lesotho. Yeah, it was probably the most significant riding experience for me so far. On one hand, I felt at home on the trails. I enjoyed the natural um, flow of the trails and the, well, the style that Renee's built them in. Built. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other hand, it was big progression. There were like very large features I never raced at that speed before. Something came onto me um, in that in that race where I was just riding like I hadn't before in the stages, learning how to use the bike differently. Um, probably a good mix of just the time spent on the bike there um, and the need to ride better because it was it was technical riding. I mean, if you wanted to walk some features, it was possible. There were lots of guys who weren't like at a super high level who were getting through the event, but I wanted to race and give it give it full berries, I suppose, and. Out of a need to ride better, I started riding better there. I'd say, and that set you up very nicely for your for your European tour, so to speak. Indeed, you got yeah. uh, three EWS events in there. Yeah, very fortunate um, to head over to Europe with my dad and go race race in Italy, France, and then back again in Italy with Martin Zietzman and Matt Lombardi. Um, yeah, also different style of racing in the EWS. More the trails are taped better, and it's is more of a, a race course where the the marking isn't so clear in Lesotho. But definitely the skills I learned on the bike where I was able to really hone there in Europe where you getting chairlifts up, you can do laps of a, of a mm. trail in a day and really get a feel for the bike and how, how it works. Yeah. So what, what are your biggest observations there, not just from, a, from the trail them, trails themselves, but, but the other riders? Is it, is it quite a big jump in yeah. terms of progression and what guys and girls are doing? They're definitely on another level. There's one, one thing is the volume. There's just so many more riders there who are at a higher level. Um, and the culture, especially in countries like France, where there's yeah. just so many kids out riding bikes and naturally the kids who have got the talent and then they get the time on the bike as well just progressing and they're riding phenomenally um but yeah it's having having the chairlifts there having the culture of riding and it's stuff that there's potential now in south africa which i'm seeing back home like it's starting to grow but mm. they are just i suppose ahead there mm. well everything takes time and yeah. all things considered mountain biking in south africa is still in comparison to european and america and america yeah. uh, european countries and, and america we're still very young yeah but in also in saying that the enduro western cape series for example and i mean they're, they're yeah. wonderful enduro events in kzn and of course the car Kloof and akahana and josie and, and a bunch of other places but for us cape town's home and the enduro western cape though what a wonderful progression we've seen there over the last oh, couple yeah. of years eh? no so good getting up to 300 riders at yeah. sa champs that brought me so much joy it's so cool to see people realizing that it's doable it's yeah. not just for those crazy people who ride like that anyone can ride trail and enjoy it that's also what i've just loved about the enduro format this year so i've just really felt like such a natural discipline for me to to compete in because you getting big days out on the bike you're, you're riding you're getting to climb up you've got good community riding with mates it's not all go flat out the whole time and you get to progress your skills learn new things yeah. on the descents yeah absolutely i mean to talk more about the sa champs and yonkers hook i mean the comments i heard there from people like yourself and matt lombardi that yonkers certainly does offer that european level of riding yeah, in terms 100%. of the trails and would you say yeah you agree with that sentiment yeah riding in europe it just made me realize how good yonkers is and some of the other trail parks we got here in the cape it's it's top notch and at a chairlift it would be <laughs> uh, <laughs> in, that in much better yeah any, but, yeah any brands out there keen for a chairlift yeah but we've got the trails and, yeah. and we're able to learn the skills there and having a SA Champs race there is, is fantastic. So good. What do you think the main barriers to entry are in people's minds when it comes to the sport of Enduro? Because realistically speaking, from, from personal experience, I've only been riding for five years, mm. but the journey into Enduro for me hasn't been all that intimidating because the community is really cool. Like everyone's there to offer advice. But, but like, what would you say is, is the biggest barrier to entry in your observations of people getting into the sport? And how can they overcome those? 
I'd say, in my opinion, most likely is just the perception that it it's very difficult and very technical and not for you, I suppose. Um, whereas sort of any riding you do in Cape Town is could be considered enduro. It's just trail riding with mm -hmm. a bit more of a competitive focus. All the features that are included in the races that are on a high level have beelines. And I've taken a few mates this year who mostly ride cross country to a few enduro events. They've absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. They've done like they've handled it all the riding. It's all about, I suppose, the speed you're going to want to ride at. I think it's also got a lot to do with the bike. So, um, enough, yeah. again, personally speaking, having essentially for the last year and a half been on the marathon trail bike, but now also having a proper enduro bike in the stable of bikes at home, um, the way that you think of trails or how to ride trails is definitely grounded with the context you have of the bike you're currently riding. So if you're looking at an enduro event, for example, you look at a specific trail and you, you're looking at it through the eyes of having ridden a Trek Top Fuel XC bike or a Piger Stage, or you're going to look at it very differently than you would if you've ridden a bigger bike with yeah. more suspension and travel, Indeed. better braking, because you know what that bigger bike's capable of. Indeed, yeah. Um, how do you think we're going to overcome that? We've just got to encourage more people to to demo bikes get and big rigs, get, yeah. get, get, big, get bigger rigs. Um, but then at the same time, you get guys like Lombardi, for example, who are riding 140 mil trail bikes Absolutely. for the most part on, on, in, on, Europe as well. in Europe as well that are short travel bikes in, in terms of, I mean, what you're riding a Piga slack line is 170 mils, but still absolutely pinning it. So it's a, it's an interesting one. It's going to be keen, I'm keen to see how it progresses, but there definitely feels there's a change in momentum For sure, moving yeah. towards. Yeah. Seeing more trail bikes on the trails and yeah. It's, so from a, a you're, you're definitely well-rounded, or at least that's the impression that you, you give off. I mean, is, is, is racing something that ultimately motivates you or is it, is it more than that? Yeah, so I'm, I'm quite new to racing. I started my first ra enduro race um, was ESL Enduro last year. Um, and I've definitely grown to, to like it. I've, I'm really enjoying it. I'm not, as I said, I'm not very achievement based. So it doesn't cut me up if I don't do as well as I thought I was going to do or if something goes wrong in a race. Um, but I've enjoyed being able to push myself and, and see how fast I can ride. There's something special about being in that stage i've spoken with matt lombardi about this you just ride differently when you're between the tape um don't know why but it's somewhat addictive i suppose mm. um so it's the racing a, does motivate me the flow state is ultimately Indeed. what you're after yeah exactly I mean, the clutter leaves in you something switches on yeah. when you're in that stage um and i enjoy that i enjoy that so you touched on matt lombardi there and uh, you touched on martin zietzman a little bit earlier on mm. uh, quite a way to round off the the racing year so oh, to yeah. speak although sa champs was after it but mm. from terms of your your European journey, uh, Trophy of Nations. Talk us through that because you guys were top 20, looked like you had a good time. Yeah, we, had a, we had a fat jaw, that's for sure. <laughs> um, surprise email from the EWS organizers to us to say that we were in and if South Africa was gonna bring a team, it would be us. Um, Is that earned through the point structures? That yeah, just the, the top ranked riders awesome. out of the points um, in our category, of course. The shot definitely would have been, <laughs> been there if he sure. wasn't under 21. Um, but yeah, we all very quickly decided we got to make this happen and we rallied and, and pulled it together. And Matt and I shared an Airbnb over there and Martin parked his van outside because <laughs> the, the race mechanic pretty much as well with this whole setup there. And yeah, we gelled well together as a team. We absolutely loved the riding there. Very interesting style of trails with a lot of flow, but then you end up in these really technical gnarly sections. Um, so flow gnarly is what we dubbed it. <laughs> And, sure. and also having a, your, your bunny hop on cue for the most yeah, unexpected. In of... case your mate bins it in front of you when you're <laughs> training down a, a trail because you've got a race together, you just got to be able to get up and over him when he, when he wipes out him, Matt. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's definitely a well-known clip. If you haven't yeah. seen it, yeah, well, you're probably watching it now on replay. But um, yeah, so, so what's next for Jason? I mean, uh, folks, got some bad news. You're going to be seeing more of him on the channel, that's for sure. Uh, it's great to, <laughs> it's great to great to have you uh, joining us uh, a bit more on the show that is for sure but from a riding perspective what can we expect from j dog in the in the 2020 season oh just more exploring i suppose i'm like going to be pushing the racing further going to be pushing this urban riding further and just wanting to you know, ride my bike in different ways in different places i've enjoyed i've enjoyed going up to places like Lesotho, and obviously europe's amazing if it's possible to get back over there again next year but yeah just more fun on the bike trying new things riding with new people that sounds like it and for people that are watching this and are on the fence about this whole enduro or trail riding thing what would your 
message to them be? Oh, DM me. We'll go for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Say no. <laughs> no. I'm joking. You can pick the trails. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I think it's uh, that's definitely the right approach. So, uh, yeah, you obviously got your own Instagram handle. What What is it? How do people follow you? It's Jason Bull. Very simple. It's just my name over here. Yeah. Very yeah. sleek. Thanks, D. Yeah. Give him a follow for all the behind the scenes stuff that you won't see on Wild Air TV. It is a slightly, slightly more crazy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, thanks. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with us today. No, that's good uh, stuff. There you, there you go, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit more about the man, Jason Bull. And yeah, all the best for 2020 on the bike. And yeah, let's, uh, well, Cheers, we'll, we'll be hanging out quite a lot this year. Indeed. That's on, bro. You. Thanks for tuning in, folks. We hope you enjoyed the ride with Jason Bull. See you for the next one. Go to, go to gym and uh, Virgin and Claremont. And then go eat a little hock of Lon's head. Yeah, a little hock of Lon's head. <laughs>